All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I think let's give it a few more minutes and let other people join. How's it going, Eric? I see you on the call. Yeah, I finally figured out how to make make it into this particular call. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. How's everybody doing? Everybody else, hope you guys are doing great. Still at home, nothing changing. Staying safe and trying to stay sane. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna volunteer myself to as soon as possible, just work from anywhere but my house. But safety first, we'll see. Yeah. California has actually uh, gone into lockdown phase yeah. two. <laughs> so it's just, it's kind of crazy. So I think like most companies that will uh, say that you can work from home until the end of the year. But... Hey, Michael. Hey, how you doing? Good. Where do you live? Uh, I'm in Indiana. Oh. How's the lockdown there? Uh, it's not too bad because I'm not in a heavily populated area, but still staying safe and staying away from things as much as possible. Yeah. Are you close to a metro area? Uh, not really. About an hour away from Indianapolis. Which is... Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. I think we have enough people. So, yeah, uh, welcome, everybody. So, we have you, Michael, today. So, uh, thank you for deciding to present. Uh, so, I guess you're going to be talking about the node resource interface. Um, and something that you've been working on, I guess. And, last few months so yeah we're happy to hear about it and because we want to learn more and and hopefully we can make this interactive too so yeah everybody can just jump in and ask questions yeah sounds good um i'll go ahead and share my screen here um... All right, I have to rejoin to share my screen. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Haven't used Zoom. Yeah. Default Mac permissions, I think. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, we're waiting for him. I see um, Zoom released a dedicated standalone screen thing for Zoom calls recently. Uh, the Facebook one seems to work really well. Uh, the only problem is at the moment it doesn't do Zoom, which is a pity. <laughs> but the Zoom one clearly does. Yeah. Okay. I think we should be good now. Are you able to see the slide deck? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is the first time I've presented this to anyone. So you all are the the first stop in showing what I've been working on. And um, so right now it's called the node resource interface, kind of a extensible way to manage resources for containers. So the entire problem is that we have resource management and we're specifically talking about kind of C groups and topology on the system. Um, we have different workload requirements. You have batch workloads, latency sensitive workloads. Um, customers have their own uh, SLAs and SLOs, or you have different classes of workloads like P1, critical, it always needs to run. And then 
all the way down to where batch would probably be classified as like P3, P4, things like that. So when you think about resource management with containers, uh, CPUs are a big one today, especially when you're wanting to run multi-tenant workloads on the same system with batch and latency sensitive web services, things like that. You wanna be able to schedule containers on specific cores, uh, whether they have entire cords or running on hyper threads. And then we also have NUMA allocations where you need to have your workload running on a particular socket because that's where other devices are attached and so on. And then also we can dig down even lower than like NUMA and CPU onto like L3 cache and then huge pages. And then like I said before, kind of proximity, um, what socket is my GPU connected on? What sockets are my network cards on it? Um, in large deployments, it's kind of uh, things you, you have to think about at the end of the day. So this creates a large matrix. There's a lot of things to consider and there's some current solutions. So Kubelet today has the CPU manager and there's a few KEPs that are already uh, outstanding with the community on proposing like, how do we improve, improve this? How do we start adding NUMA support to this? But when I was researching this, there's a lot of weird UX. So like, you're a guaranteed pod and your requests equal your limits, then you get CPU sets and you're scheduled on dedicated cores. And I, I don't think that's very uh, friendly, a uh, very friendly UX. It's kind of uh, hidden away and you have to know the right knobs to turn and things like that. And it's off by default. And then there's topology manager, which basically only the CPU manager and device manager take advantage of and that's provided by a hint providers. So there's another solution from Intel. They have the Intel CPU manager for cube. Um, there's a CLI tool called CMK, which does kind of the low level uh, allocating pools um, and then placing workloads within those pools, depending on different things and, and picking what CPUs go into what pool. And then they have the CRI resource manager that builds on top of CMK for use within cube. And uh, one thing with that is they have to hijack the entire CRI socket. And they also have some uh, API extensions for this. And uh, the CRI interface is kind of a really big interface whenever you only want to deal with like scheduling containers on specific cores. So overall QS, QoS is hard. There's lots of users depending on your scale. Um, it's hard to solve this for everyone. So my kind of proposal from the beginning is with the Kubelet having CPU manager and these hard these implementations within the Kubelet cores, we need to focus on APIs and not implementations because it's very hard to solve a problem like this that's very dependent on scale and what devices are on machine for everyone. And so it's better to focus on the APIs to enable people to, to build their own solutions. So, if we look at kind of existing interfaces, we have CNI, the container network interface. And this is something that really stands out to me within the container community. I think it's simple, elegant, it's extensible. You can compose various plugins together. And there's no controversy that I've seen within the design of CNI. And it's basically, we've all accepted it and, um, and, and use it within Cube and, and other container projects. So my, my proposal is let's make CNI for resources, right? I like this API, everyone that worked on CNI should be proud of what they built. And we need to start extending APIs like this into other areas for containers. So came up with NRI because CRI was already taken 
I'd, I'd rather it be named container resource interface, but we already have container runtime interface. So NRI is the best I could come up with right now. And designing this, like, I don't think Kubelet is the right abstraction for this. We have the Kubelet and then we have CRIs. And CRIs are very low level. They know how to interact with the system, whether you're on Linux or Windows. Um, they deal with this, but then the lines between Kubelet and the CRIs are starting to get very blurry. There's C groups code in the Kubelet. It can, uh, it's hard to tell who's responsible for resource management right now with CPU manager and topology manager there. And at the CRI level, we have very robust ways to hook into the actual life cycle of a container on a system. So it goes way beyond like OCI runtime hooks where um, you hook in kind of the recent developments are we have this create and start split within OCI where create will create the namespaces, set up C groups. And then we have this pause in between and this is where like CNI comes in and where I'm proposing NRI comes in where, where it can take what's the existing setup, you, you can modify the resources, add additional things, and then we start the container, uh, which is the user's process. So designing this, uh, kind of taking a lot of inspiration from CNI, we have kind of a global systems config, and you have a list of these plugins where you can compose these together, chain them. Plugins can have specific um, configuration. So for this confined plugin, we have system reserve cores where we say, when you're dealing with topology and scheduling these workloads on cores, I need zero and one to be reserved for the system. So don't touch those and you have the rest of it. And then um, kind of enable to build a good ecosystem around this, like CNI is done, you need kind of skeleton code, make it easy for people to build these plugins and not get in their way. So kind of worked on packages for, as a plugin developer, I wanna develop a plugin that does X. Here's, here's all the skeleton and boilerplate so you can quickly get up and running. And then if we look at the integration in the CRI level, it's extremely simple because I believe CRI is the right place to add things like this. So you would go into different life cycles of the container and in the create step, you would invoke the NRI plugins at this step. At deletion, you would invoke the deletion handles and then we start the container. So it's very robust. We have uh, explicit places to inject these in the life cycle of the container and it's not um, it's not bleeding over into other people's functionality in the stack. So during this work I worked on this confined plugin with a K for cube and uh, what it does is dynamic topology management in QoS. So um, as pods and workloads are scheduled on the system, they're labeled with their QoS class, and depending on whether they're latency sensitive, they get placed on entire cores. Um, the way this works is you have kind of a default pool, which is where batch workloads go. Batch uh, contains their CFS quotas as well, so they can't use the entire core, but if a latency sensitive service comes in, we go ahead and clear the CFS quotas on that because they're saying this workload needs two cores, they get allocated the entire core and they're able to use all of that. And this does it dynamically. So as latency sensitive and batch hit the system, we keep high utilization because if a latency sensitive application stops, those cores can be returned to the batch, batch workloads. So we kind of build a dynamic node topology. Um, it dynamically places workloads on the system based on the QoS class. We have NUMA support. So if your uh, latency sensitive service says, I need, to be, I need to be on a specific NUMA node or I need to reserve the entire NUMA node, it can do that and it will still steal that node away from uh, the batch workloads or return that whenever that workload's done. 
So kind of with these plugins, there's no need to wait for longer cube release cycles for updates to CPU manager, topology manager. You have a community being built up of all these plugins with NRI, you just update them as you need to, and you're not tied to a cube release cycle as you would be with CPU manager. Um, you can kind of chain all these together. You can make plugins that do one thing and do them well. And uh, it keeps your code simpler and more robust and things we care about at the infrastructure layer. And like if, if a specific plugin doesn't work for you, then fork it, change it, make your own or build more plugins for your own needs. So kind of on this journey, uh, SIG Runtime's the first stop to present this and start getting some feedback. Um, I'll have a formal spec up hopefully today within the Container D project because um, it's kind of where I have my default implementation and hooks into CTR and the CRI uh, for, for Cube in that project and then kind of expand out to different SIGs and things like that. So that's kind of the high level overview. And if you have any questions and stuff, we can do that now. And I can go back to any slide if you need. So would this uh, essentially would replace the topology manager and the CPU manager? Or, so, or it will actually work uh, side by side or, or it will be something that uh, eventually will become just one. Uh, they they don't work side by side because they would start to conflict with each other. Or at this stage, it would be able to override the cubelet. So um, it's best you would want to have CPU manager off, which right now it's off by default. But um, yeah. So it sounds like the idea just to eventually kind of make this the standard later on, you know, maybe a CPU manager and topology manager can potentially okay. go away, you know, maybe to improve the, the experience, right? The user experience. Or they could be broken out in the plugins themselves with those specific implementations. But yeah. the, the overall goal is to have an API to develop this stuff and not try to code everything in the kubelet. Yeah, I, I, I've seen the CPU manager, the UX is kind of weird too, because I mean, you specify the requests and the limits need to be the same. So that's not really clear. I mean, and in, in when you specify uh, the limits in the, in the pod spec, right? So I, I, yeah, I can see that this, I mean, it, the UX is Well, it's actually, worse than that. You need that and you need it to be integer. And it needs to be a Tuesday, and then you get a use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and when I was looking at the Intel Intel CPU manager work, it seems like they could easily plug into this NRI interface for the CMK tool and do their existing work, and then they wouldn't have to implement the surface area of CRI. CRI to hijack into this. They have a very specific um, API for doing this. So I think I think it aligns well with the work that's being done there. I told Sasha about this. He had a hard conflict this morning. So I'll make sure that he gets the recording. Um, I think he'd, he'd right. probably be very intrigued by this and, and maybe have some good feedback. Yeah, he keeps slacking me. I showed him uh, some of the pictures from it and he'll, he'll reach out. All right, cool. Cool. Yeah, is there like a mechanism where like uh, you also get feedback from um, from the systems, right? So you it basically uh, some monitoring that says, okay, my I'm kind of full or I'm kind of overloaded. Can you move this stuff away from me into some other node or something like that? or? Uh, yeah, so my general idea of it was that 
the cube schedulers will still handle placing workloads on the node. And if they decide to oversubscribe a node or not, that's kind of a high level scheduling decision where at this level, it's hard to provide feedback back up the stack. Like we could always kill a container, but then the cubelet wouldn't know why we killed that. So I think with different scheduling uh, strategies, you may want to oversubscribe. So uh, I don't think it's too much of a, a big deal that we don't have a current method to for the CRI to kind of talk back to the cubelet on rejecting workloads or not. But it's something I've thought about and needs to look into more. Yeah, and I guess uh, essentially the the scheduler will make those decisions. I mean, the, the scheduler will have to get that information and based on that, uh, you know, decide where to move the, the pods, right? Yeah, ideally the scheduler, like we're, we're thinking more about type topology and placing on what cores, the scheduler still knows we have 24 cores to schedule on. So hope, hopefully it wouldn't push too much workload where, where it'd be an issue. Yeah. So how does this, sorry, I missed the beginning part. This is Diane Fatima. How would this work with special devices like FPGAs? And you, so it, this would handle all that because there would be a plugin for each specialized hardware type. Is that the idea? Uh, yeah. I. I'm working on a way to chain plugins together so they can get feedback within the chain of where they know who executed before them, what changes they made. But yeah, it would be where vendor specific implementations like plugins can be made for devices that you need to do something more powerful on. And it, what, maybe just a, an example use case for that would be placement based on which device is because we're still looking at more topology they would still have a device plug and everything else <clears throat> you're just looking at where you would place the actual container or the pod processes uh with the context of where your device is and the topology too is that is that right so like it wouldn't be a device plugin but it would based on using a device you would have have a wiser placement of the workload is, is that kind of the idea or expectation. Yeah, the expectation is we're giving you a powerful interface where where you can make those decisions. I had a I had a quick question. Um, first of all, thanks for a, a really interesting presentation, and you've raised some what I think are very fundamental and very uh, interesting questions. Um, and so first of all, I must prefix this by saying I'm, I'm not super familiar with uh, Kubelet and the various interfaces that are down at that level, CNI, CRI, and the stuff you guys are working on. But, but it seems clear to me that a lot of that stuff kind of developed organically. And uh, I think if I read between the lines what you're saying, like not all of it is ideal. If we were to sort of start from with a blank sheet of paper, we might architect things differently. And I don't mean this to be offensive to anybody who who is being involved in the current architecture, but it seems to me like it might be useful to actually um, kind of sketch out what we think a sort of reference architecture for these kinds of things might be. Uh, and, you know, look at where we came from, look at where we'd like to go to. And this doesn't necessarily need to be Kubernetes specific. This can be sort of from a point of view of like, if you're going to do container orchestration in a cloud native way, uh, you know, these are the kinds of things you run into. And this is what we think is a good reference architecture and have, you know, the various different implementations of these things at least have a kind of a guiding light as to what we think a good approach is. To, to, does that, uh, I know it's a little hand wavy and airy fairy, but is that something anybody's working on at the moment that, that we're aware of? Or, or if not, is it something that we as a group want to take on as a, as a project? 
Yeah, I don't I don't know of anything from my research and like I think it's a good idea and like within that architecture like my whole thing of let's focus on APIs instead of implementations like we you can tell the Kubelet grew organically just like Docker which is one project I worked on in the past so like you make compromises and you have growing pains things like that but I think interfaces kind of stand the test of time where implementations get refactored and and you can always break things out like the CPU manager could start in Kubelet now and say like actually this needs to be factored out behind an interface Yeah, that makes sense. Is is anyone else on the call sort of intimately involved in, for example, Signode? And does anybody know what the status of like coming up with a grand vision for the node interfaces stands? Because it's, it's the other problem that, and this is completely sort of anecdotally from looking from the outside, it looks like a lot of these interfaces have developed somewhat in isolation from each other. So, you know, the networking people that CNI and the, the container people did CRI and and it's not clear that, that anybody with a holistic vision across all of these things necessarily kind of uh, weighed in. Uh, and that, that may be wrong, but that's the impression I get. And I was, you know, I, I know Dawn very well and I was in the Google Kubernetes team who sort of started all the stuff way back. So, so um, these are very competent engineers, but things happen the way they do uh, organically. and. Uh, maybe it's a good good time to sort of look at that stuff. Yeah, it, it sounds good to me. I mean, uh, I mean, to the the next question that I have is that uh, is a group of people interested in starting uh, sort of like a working group and 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 address some of these issues, right? So, and, and Quentin, you, you brought up the issue of uh, maybe bringing up some of this, all, all the interfaces together so or, or people can have that communication across the different teams, right? So that would, you know, so that, so they, they agree on, a, on certain standards. Uh, what I've seen in the past is that a lot of the teams actually work on their own, like, like, like you mentioned, and, and, and you know, a lot of these interfaces kind of come up and and they're kind of different in different ways. Uh, in this case, uh, you're, you're following the CNI spec, which is great, I think. But, uh, you know, there are some other cases where, I mean, some of the other teams are actually working independently and it may not be the best, best experience for some of the end users. Um, so, yeah, so the idea here is just to, to, to make the, exp the user experience uh, uh, more, un more uh, together, and, and and so that people, you know, make you know make better decisions on how to want to use the tools, and and uh, be they become more useful in the end. Yeah, I think before we start any group to do any brainstorming in that regard, I would definitely want to catch up with the people. I think the de facto place where these conversations happen. Or, or did in the past happen anyway was was Signode, the Kubernetes Signode. Um, so we should definitely go and chat to whoever runs the show there, um, and and just get a sort of state of play from them. I, I don't want us to create some other you know working group that is now like solving problems that already have been thought about deeply somewhere else. Uh, I'd be very cautious of that. I a they even have a subgroup for. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I thought we already created the working group for a container device interface, or is it still in process? That's already created, but I, I, I don't know if this is exactly within the, the scope of that. Uh, yeah, so I'll there's a I'll resource management work group as well. Um, that because there's a lot of discussion around like CRIRM and topology manager and things like this, because I don't think anybody's happy with it. Um, as is in Signode, because that was consuming a lot of time. They created a different work group specifically focused on resource management. Um, I haven't been attending that just because it, it's very um, EU friendly. It's a little bit too early on my side and, and haven't had a reason, but I'd be curious to see if 
you could talk in sig node, but it might be a more focused discussion with a bit more um, uh, focused opinion in the resource management one as well. And if we are to create a, a working group in a, in a, in a CNCF, uh, maybe we can uh, we can expand that working group for container device interface to something more generic that would incorporate more more interfaces, not just a specific one. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's uh, another option or a, a feasible option, I think. But uh, what Quentin brings up uh, also makes sense, which is. Uh, you know, talk to some of the other teams and sit down and we don't want to kind of, you know, say that we're going to be working on this and when some other people might be already uh, be talking about doing something similar. Yeah. So I think it's, it's uh, some work is uh, to be done related to reaching out to some of those groups. And, uh, and if somebody's on the call today um, that it's in one of those groups, like, Quentin mentioned, then they can reach out to some of those uh, other working groups. Yeah, I think it needs to be someone with a with a good sound technical understanding of the issues at that level. Uh, I, I don't have that understanding and I would definitely not want to be the person leading this technical kind of coordination role. Um, but, but if anyone is on the call or knows of anyone who would be interested in doing that kind of coordination, we have some tech leads on this group. Um, uh, Diane and others, I think Diane seems to have dropped off, but, uh, but yeah, I think it would be very important to get the right person there. There's, there's a lot of technical detail, but there's also a lot of coordination of different groups. This, this sort of area has a history of, of becoming politically charged. Um, <laughs> we have networking vendors and, you know, container vendors and all sorts of people involved. So we have to be very careful not to uh, kind of create a, a, a 17th committee to kind of try and standardize these things if, if the people involved don't actually want to standardize them the way we do. So, yeah, that's my two cents. So anybody on, on the call would like to take this on? <laughs> I think rather than necessarily um, force people to make decisions now. Let's let's put that on our to-do list of finding the right person for that role and, and put a sort of, I mean, it's gonna take a while to get all of this stuff together. This is kind of like a multi-quarter project, I think. And uh, it's gonna be very important to staff it with the right people. We've got enough examples of attempts in this direction that haven't gone anywhere. So uh, let's put that on our agenda for the next few months to figure out the details and get the right people involved. And, and they may not be in this meeting, you know, they could be uh, working for companies of other people involved here, for example. Yeah, makes sense. Any other comments? Anything you'd like to talk about uh, related to this? Uh, any other topics that you want to bring up? Sounds like that's it. Thanks for a very thought provoking talk, Michael. And uh, thanks for. Uh, getting all the interesting presenters together. Ricardo. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Thanks all.